Hello! Today I'd like to present a tutorial on weaving a Japanese cherry blossom or sakura as well as using it as a part of woven items. Many of you have already got to know this flower on social media as well as on Strana Masterov, Land of Masters website, first presented by Elena Lamohina. She is a wonderful skilled master of weaving. However, though she has shown how to, how to involve this flower in newspaper weaving, but she has used the technique of root weaving. Today I'm going to show you how to involve this flower into newspaper items woven with poles. But first of all, let's get to know the technique of weaving the very flower. Elena has already presented the weaving scheme, so I'm not going to show it for the second time. Let's watch a tutorial on the process of weaving the flower. For weaving a flower we need three newspaper tubes. I'm going to use three tubes of different colors for vivid demonstration of the way each tube twists. So let's watch it on the example of different color tubes at first. What else do I have to add? The tubes have to be rigid. You'd better glue along the whole edge while rolling a tube. The tubes mustn't be wet, cause we are going to twist them a few times and pull them tight. Of course you cannot treat a wet tube like this. On the other hand, the tubes mustn't be over-dried, otherwise they would break. So we can conclude that the tubes have to be fresh painted and dry. So here I've got three tubes. A white, a pink and a blue one. Let's put a blue tube aside so far. Take two tubes and place them X-shaped. A pink tube over a white one. Let's press them a little like this and start working with the lower tube. Curve the white tube beneath the pink one and turn it over the pink tube. You've got a twist like this. Now let's work with the pink tube. Repeat all the same actions. Twist the pink tube over the white one and place it above the white tube. However, there is a slight hitch. If I just place it above, it's going to stick up like this. I have to fasten it somehow, so let's lead it through this coil. Now we've got the structure more rigid. We've made two zigzags, with a pink tube and with a white one. Now we've got to make an identical zigzag with a third tube. Let's take the blue tube and lead it beneath this crossing of the white and the pink tube. So I enter the coil beneath the first intersection and lead it out over the second intersection. Look beneath and above. Hug everything with the blue tube from beneath and lead it up. However, we've got to fasten it in this position. Now we have to lead this blue tube under the pink and white tube at the same time. Look, I lead a knitting needle, needle through this pink coil, then here under the white tube. I mean I lead it under two tubes at a time. Now insert the needle into the blue tube and pull it through this way. Our cherry blossom is ready. The only thing left is to, peel the tube, to pull the tubes tight. How do we do it? Look, the stitches of the same color are parallel. While making a separate flower, I get all the six loose ends, so I can tighten them. While weaving an integrated item, I don't have all the six ends loose, so I'm going to show you some nuances later. 
Let's put the tubes tight. You can soften the tubes with your fingers a little, or you can do without. Don't worry, the tubes are very strong, as we rolled about 10 newspaper layers around a knitting needle while rolling a tube. So that'll do. You've got a flower like this. You've got six tails. Blue ones, pink ones and white ones. All of them are parallel to the tails of the same color. After you've made about a hundred of such flowers, you'll start working automatically, without thinking of how and where to twist each tube. So, we've got a sakura made of three different colored tubes. Let's try to make a single colored flower a bit faster. As I've already mentioned, you can soften the tubes a little, it makes no difference. Anyway, you'll be pulling your tubes and pressing them. So, I intercross two tubes, lead the lower down and up. Here is our zigzag. Now let's lead the second tube round, here it is, and lead it through the coil. Here we've got our structure ready. And the third tube, insert it from beneath, lead it up, hug the structure with it and adjoin it to the first tail of the same very tube. And now lead a knitting needle through these first and second coils. I have to lead my tube through like this. That's all. Now pull all the tails tight one after another. Take your time, don't be in a hurry. This tail hasn't been tightened yet. When we start weaving, I'm going to show you the way I tighten the tubes. So we've got a single colored cherry blossom. Please look, the wrong side looks quite satisfactory as well. Now let's have a look at where we can involve these flowers. You can create a bottom with their help. Look, I adjoin an additional tube to each loose end. You can adjoin all the additional tubes at a time like this, or do it in the process of weaving, there is no difference. Now I take a tube and start twining round the tubes. Look, I'm taking two tubes at a time and putting a loop round them. Pull it tight and continue weaving. Here is my additional tube, I'm adjoining it. As for the rest of additional tubes, I can take them aside so far, so that they didn't interfere. I've already shown the process on stranamasterov.ru. Please take a look. Adjoin the next tube. I don't apply any glue and I don't care about shorter or longer tails. I'm going to cut them off afterwards anyway. This way I'm twining around the flower. Continue. Just adjoin the tubes like this and twine around them. I believe it must be already clear that we are creating a bottom this way. I'm going to weave a few rows around double tubes after which I'll separate them and weave a bottom of required size. I enjoy weaving a bottom like this very much. It is fast and easy and you've got a nice looking core. The working tube is too short, but I'm not going to lengthen it. Let me show you a ready bottom instead. 
I'm supposed to be with you rows more than separate the tubes and lengthen them for a weaving a bottom of required size. I made use of a bottom like this twice already. You can see a cherry flower in the center of this basket. And let me show it to you on the example of a semi-finished item. Let's take a base out and please take a look. Here I've started weaving a bottom from a sakura as well and woven a bottom like this round it. So this was the first idea of how to use a cherry blossom. Now let me show you one more idea. If you make a flower and then lead the tubes down, you can tie them round for example. So you can use it as a handle tip and continue weaving around it. As an option you can unite a few flowers and create a circle for example. Look here I've got two flowers. If I add two more flowers here and twine them round I'll get a small circle like this. On a basket cover for example. How to unite the flowers? Let's take a look at how you can unite two, three or even more flowers. We've made one flower already. Now let's create the next motif. We need three tubes again. However, since the flowers are supposed to get united, one of the tubes will be common for both flowers. Take two tubes and repeat all the same actions. Intercross the tubes, make a loop, bend. Make the next twist, lead the tail through the loop. Here is a structure consisting of two tubes. The third tube is going to be borrowed from the first flower. Look, let's take this tail for example. I lead it beneath the crossing into the center. Now I have to place it above. However, there is a slight hitch. While weaving a separate flower, I could pull all the six tails tight. In this case, I won't be able to tighten the tails. So if I leave them like this, the interval between the flowers will be that big. That's why I bring the two flowers as close to each other as possible. Well, it can be rather inconvenient, but don't worry, there is nothing too hard about it. Make a twist around two tubes and lead a tail out parallel and next to the first tail of the same tube. Here it was, so it is where I lead it out. And insert a neat needle here under the two tubes. I have to lead this tail through like this. Now I can pull these four tails tight. As for this tube I can tighten only one of its tails. Pull the tubes tight. Now let me draw your attention to the following. You have to tighten this tail. Here it goes. It is where it starts and where it twists. So you can pull this coil toward you with the help of a knitting needle. Then you pass on to the next coil belonging to this tube. Look, I'm pulling the coil which tightens this part of the tube. After which you can pull the very end tight. If you find it too loose you can pull it a bit tight and help yourself with the fingers. Here I've got two flowers united. If I have to unite more flowers, I'm going to continue the same very way. So it is the way I unite the flowers.